Perhaps the only place on Earth still full of mysteries and largely unexplored are the oceans. They cover more than 70% of the Earth's surface. Most oceans have an average depth of 3.7 kilometers, but this one reaches more than 11 kilometers deep, the Mariana Trench. In its depths, despite freezing cold and unimaginable pressure, it harbors life forms waiting to be discovered. But do we really know what lies hidden in such a deep place? So how was this trench discovered? What did it have to do with the Soviet Union? And what about the two mysterious sound recordings from the Mariana Trench? Have their secrets ever been solved? In this video, we'll seek answers to all of these questions and embark on a mysterious journey into the depths of the Mariana Trench. Around 180 million years ago, while dinosaurs ruled the land in the Jurassic period, a battle began deep in the ocean. Two massive tectonic plates collided, unstoppable yet slow. The Pacific Plate began sliding beneath the Philippine Plate. This immense weight dragged the ocean floor downward, creating the deepest scar on our planet, the Mariana Trench, stretching 2,550 kilometers long. Its deepest point lies 10,984 meters below sea level, though more recent measurements suggest it's even deeper than 11,000 meters. A chasm wide as continents and deep enough to swallow Mount Everest. The year was 1872, and this place was about to be discovered. The HMS Challenger set out on one of history's greatest global ocean expeditions. Their aim was to map the seafloor, traveling 70,000 miles, equivalent to about one-third the distance between the Earth and the Moon. During the journey, they conducted measurements at 350 different locations, using a long rope with a heavy iron weight. When the weight touched the bottom, they could measure the depth. One of these expeditions brought them near Guam Island in the Western Pacific. They lowered the rope, and it unwound endlessly. 3,000 meters. 5,000 meters. 7,000 meters. And still no end in sight. Finally, it stopped at 4,475 fathoms, or 8,185 meters. The crew stood in silence. Never before had they encountered such depth, an endless abyss, a hidden wound of the earth. Without knowing it, the HMS Challenger crew had just written the first page of one of history's greatest discoveries. But little-known facts remain. The first measurements were actually inaccurate. Currents and rope sag weren't considered and the mapping itself wasn't entirely scientific, but also military in origin, finding the best regions for undersea cables and naval routes. Years later, in 1951, HMS Challenger II used a newly developed sonar system designed in the 1940s to detect enemy submarines. By sending out sound waves and measuring their echoes, they discovered the trench's true depth, approximately 10,900 meters. This deepest point was named Challenger Deep in honor of the expedition. To give you an idea, if you placed the 102-story Empire State Building inside it, it would look like a toy. After this discovery, the name Challenger Deep was given to reward the ship for reaching that depth. People at that time wanted to learn how this pit was formed and what it looked like, because it was the deepest point on our planet. Now, all they wanted was to go down there. By now, 
There were those who wanted to descend to the deepest point of the Mariana Trench and conduct research, but there was a major problem. The pressure at the deepest point was 1,000 times greater than normal. That's the equivalent of having the weight of three Eiffel Towers pressing down on you. To help people understand what this would look like, a team conducted an experiment to demonstrate the situation visually. They took the head of a dummy and placed it inside a pressure capsule, exposing it to extremely high pressure. The result was both fascinating and somewhat comical. The dummy's head had shrunk dramatically under the pressure. And this was despite the fact that it was made of thick rubber material. Thinking about what would happen to a real human being under such conditions is terrifying. Naturally, they needed to find a solution to this. In 1953, the eccentric Swiss scientist Auguste Picard wanted to become the first person to descend into the Challenger Deep and observe the trench. To do this, a pressure-resistant submersible was required. In the early 1950s, Picard designed a special deep-diving submersible called a bathyscaphe built to withstand extreme pressure. Unlike conventional submarines, which were designed for horizontal movement and long voyages, bathyscaphs were built for vertical descent and reaching maximum depth. Following this invention, the first construction began in Italy in 1953. In 1954, the first test dives were carried out, but they only managed to reach 3,500 meters. In 1958, the U.S. Navy purchased the Trieste and modified it. It was then redesigned to withstand depths of up to 11,000 meters. The first descent of the Trieste into the Mariana Trench finally took place on January 23, 1960. Auguste Picard, now too old to take part, could not risk it. Instead, his son Jacques Picard and U.S. Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh volunteered for the mission. The pair would spend nine hours in a cramped capsule. It was an extremely risky journey, but all preparations had been completed. Slowly, at a rate of three miles per hour, they began descending. After reaching 3,000 feet, they were completely engulfed in darkness. Not long after, they witnessed something miraculous. Bioluminescent sea creatures glowing on their own in the pitch-black waters. It was as if they had entered a fantastical world. After about five hours, they finally reached the bottom, 36,000 feet deep, a place where 99.9% .9 of humanity would never witness with their own eyes. Pure darkness, a silent, unknown world. As they approached the final stage of their descent, through the windows, they saw a soft, mud-like sediment and very little marine life. But one particular sight stood out. A flat, whitish fish, about 30 centimeters long. For scientists, this was impossible. Bony fish were not supposed to be able to survive at such depths. But perhaps science had been wrong all along. Jacques Picard later described this moment in his book. The answer to a question biologists had been asking for decades was suddenly before our eyes. Could life exist at the deepest point of the ocean? Yes, life was there, right in front of us. Due to the rising sediment stirred up during the descent, the camera footage became blurred, leaving the team with no choice but to begin their ascent. Yet, they had accomplished the impossible. They had reached the deepest place on Earth ever explored by humans. In 1957, the Soviet Union had been the first nation to send a human into space. 
and in 1960, in contrast, the U.S. became the first nation to send humans into the deepest part of the Earth. The area they had reached was part of what scientists long before had called the Hoddle Zone, any region below 6,000 meters. The name came from Hades, the god of the underworld, who ruled over the souls of the dead and held the keys to the gates of the afterlife. The ocean's most pitch-black, cold and inescapable zone was like the underwater reflection of the land of the dead. And perhaps this is why, many years later, when a mysterious sound recording emerged from the depths of the Mariana Trench, some began to wonder if something else might truly be living down there. In 1997, a recording made by NOAA captured a sound unlike any other colossal oceanic noises such as the bloop. This sound could be detected from more than 3,000 kilometers away. It bore no resemblance to the noises of waves, earthquakes, or any known marine creatures. Some scientists suggested it might belong to a gigantic sea creature, while others believed it pointed to an unknown geological event occurring on the ocean floor. Yet whatever it was, no definitive evidence has ever been found. Toward the end of 2014, another strange sound was recorded, this time west of the Mariana Trench. NOA's deep-sea hydrophones first picked up a low rumble, followed by an increasingly high-pitched ringing tone. At first, its mystery seemed impossible to solve. But after months of analysis, it was concluded that the sound most likely belonged to Balanoptera acutorostrata, the minke whale, an unusual type of call. At least, that was the closest explanation. However, one question remained unanswered. Why was this sound heard only during certain periods and only around the Mariana region? Even today, the true source of that mysterious sound and what lies within the depths of the Hadal zone remains unknown. Perhaps one day, our technology will lead us beyond that darkness to the truth that hides there. But until that day comes, the Mariana Trench will continue to be one of the greatest mysteries of our planet.